we're looking at the scalene muscles. This is a picture of the anatomy, and I'll just talk through a few basic. Here is your sternum or your breastbone. This is the first rib. This is the clavicle, which has been cut to show the area of the first rib where the muscles insert. So there are three scalene muscles. The anterior or the front one s attaches to the tubercle which is a little bump just on the side of the second cervical vertebra and it has so it attaches to the tubercle of the second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. These all join together into a, a fair sized muscle the second scalene, which is the biggest, is the scalenus medius, or the middle scalene muscle. And this attaches from the first to the seventh cervical vertebra. So it attaches just slightly further back on this tubercle, which is the part of the transverse process of each of the vertebrae. It then all these separate fascicles join together. It then becomes a short tendon and has quite a broad insertion into the first rib. This muscle sits almost in the sagittal plane of the body, which means if you divide the body in half, front and back, this muscle sits directly in the middle of that plane. And then there's a much smaller and much less significant scalenus posterior, the most backward one, which is attaches just to the sixth cervical vertebra and it runs across and joins actually to the second rib. I have here the three muscles and the scalenus anterior has two trigger points. Here's one which as you can see, overlies the sixth cervical vertebrae, and then the second it is higher up over the fourth cervical vertebrae. The scalenus anterior is the one which most commonly gets trigger points. Then there is only one in the large scalenus medius, which is quite low down over the seventh cervical vertebrae, and it sits just above where the clavicle lives, except remember it's further back. It's in the middle of the sagittal plane of the body. Behind that is the infrequent trigger point in the very small scalenus posterior. These trigger points refer pain in a very broad pattern, which makes them mimickers, you see, because in the front, they refer pain into the chest and into the front of the arm, which is a very common presentation for shoulder pain. In the back, they refer pain down the inside of the scapula, which is a mimicker of the muscles, the iliocostalis muscle, the rhomboid muscle, the levator scap muscle, and down the back of the arm, which mimics triceps and mimics infraspinatus plus shoulder pain uh, if you've got uh, impingement and so on and the pain runs all the way down to the thumb and the index finger and this kind of pattern would mimic perhaps a nerve being pinched in the neck. The important thing about this is that the type of pain is most commonly a dull aching pain and is not typically the kind of pain that you get with nerve root impingement which is a lancinating shooting electric type pain often associated with tingling and numbness so this you would co these this complex pattern you would feel as an ache What's really interesting about this pain here, this shoulder pain, which you can see is in the front in a typical impingement position and in the back, 
is that the way that this pain is relieved is when somebody lifts their arm up and holds it above their head. And this is not infrequent that I hear when somebody comes in and says, I've got this terrible arm pain and the only way I can sleep is by lying with, lifting my arm up above my head and that tells me, ha ha, this pain is most likely coming from the scalene rather than from the shoulder itself. Now, this isn't the whole story with the scalenes. And this is the other part of the complexity of the scalene muscles. And if you look at this excellent picture, you can see that here is the anterior scalene, here is the medius, and running out between them is the whole brachial plexus, which is all the nerves that come out of the cervical spine, run across the top of your neck, slide over the first rib, running between the insertion of the two muscles, and then run down your arm together with the artery and the vein supplying the arm with blood and with messages from your brain down and messages from the arm back up. So if you have trigger points in the anterior and the scalenus medius, what they do is that they cause the muscles to become tighter because you get a tight band, they shorten and they may put pressure on the nerves as they come out and under these circumstances the thing that will be set off is pain which is the neuropathic pain in other words the pain I spoke about earlier this if a nerve is being pinched you may also have shooting stabbing pain which is associated with numbness and tingling so the scalenes are complex. Not only do the triggers cause the complex pain distribution that I described, but also they may actually impinge on the nerves and in so doing cause typical pain that you would get with a prolapse disc, which is nerve root pain.